<laughs> but it's cool though the uh, the left and the right thing, because it gives it like a dynamic. Yeah, you know, it gives it like a feel of like two actual two people in your living room or whatever you're listening on. Especially if you're listening through headphones. Yeah. It gives like a great sound dynamic to have one person on one side and another person on the other side. Yeah, then that's something he complained about. Like, oh, I can't listen to it in my car. I'm like, well, you probably get different different headphones. Maybe that will work. Or... Yeah, <laughs> Bluetooth. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, I was yeah. like, if I was an audio expert, I would try to fix it, but... <laughs> so... Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people have get, got, got hit hard with that Force on week, uh, Weekends. Like, I, I got my tickets back in October to see this movie, and I went on opening night, and, like, I got home, I guess it was maybe almost 3 in the morning, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do my review, and I wrote my review out for it, and then, um, in the morning I was going to go record the, the review for it, and then I started seeing everybody else's reviews, and everybody was getting hit with, like, like, the Star Wars fans were just going crazy on people. And I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to do a review. Yeah, it's kind of a uh, two sides of the fence type of thing. I mean, it seems like one side of the fence is like a lot of the mainstream media that loves the film. And you got kind of the more passionate fans, the hardcore fans. Uh, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, my love for the Star Wars is from my like episode four through six. Mm-hmm. Uh, prequels don't, didn't work for me. With I, I think is the worst one being the second one, mm-hmm. but it just the Force Awakens just copy and paste a lot of shit. But that's just me. I mean, that's just my personal. Well, yeah. Like, when you look at it, it does. It does. It's kind of like they try to play it true to the original, but at the same time, they depended a lot on pretty much telling the same story through a different dynamic. You know, so. It kind of feels like the same movie in a lot of ways. Yeah, and I know some fans were like, well, that's the point. You know, they did that for a reason. I'm like, that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. But that's just... But, uh, wow, man. I sent him a message. I was like, Mom, Skype, I'm mad. He's like, I'm here. And... Oh, he's on? I don't know. Well, um, I, I still haven't heard from him yet. Uh, we'll just keep talking. I mean, ain't... All right. Let's, let me check my call graph because every time we get ready to record, call graph is already recording the conversation. Okay. So it's probably recording this conversation right now. Cool. Um, I haven't started yet. I'm just. I, so I did you watch Tango Cash? Again? Yeah, I just finished watching it. It's a lot better than what I remember it being. You know, I think. Yeah. Like, the first time I saw it, I was in that kick of, you know, I saw it when it just came out. So I was coming off a kick of watching all the great Stallone movies coming into that new era of, like, the revamped Stallone, you know, like the 90s Stallone. And at that time, I guess, I liked it, but I just didn't think of it as an over-the-top type of spectacle. And now watching it, going back and watching it, I'm like, damn, like... There's a lot of stuff they got right that I didn't give it credit for. Like there's yeah, a uh, there's a lot of stuff that's still kind of you know, I I won't use the word cheesy, but like but there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that's still kind of like gimmicky, but it still there's a lot of stuff they got right. And you know, be, it, feel free to say whatever you want in this uh, recording. Thank you. I mean, it's an open forum. We're not gonna. Be like trolls out there and stuff. <laughs> Damn but, trolls! I'm trying to get some uh, more light in here. I was gonna say. Yeah. But yeah, I, had a, I watched it again a few days ago, and it, to me, I still classic. I mean, uh, so I wanted to do some research, and I was like, I heard something about Tingling Cash had some production problems, and I read more up on it, and I'm like, whoa, that's the long fire, the cinematographer. Really. Uh, yeah, like, and I'll, wow. I'll probably read off what Wiki, Wikipedia says, and I can believe that, mm-hmm. because uh, even Brian James, that actor, uh, you know Brian James, right? The ponytail guy? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because he, 
had an interview before he passed and how he mentioned that oh at the time Stallone had an ego and he was firing people he had uh, creative input and he was power playing the production and stuff like that so it was kind of interesting damn like there was one they had two directors technically one director who directed uh, uh, about three fourths of the film and for the last final act they had a different director for the action uh, it's you can kind of see that too because I found that the last act felt a bit rushed like I could have gone with a, like at least five five more minutes of action in the end you know it kind of felt like really rushed at the end like, like it came quick yeah like a bookend or something yeah like that whole scene in the in the in the maze at the end yeah they could have done they could have done like five more minutes of that they could have had five more minutes of shootouts and and the fights, yeah, it kind of felt rough. You can tell there was definitely a different approach to the third act. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, did you find that uh, did you find it? I found it kind of had a lot of like a Beverly Hills Cop feel to it. Yeah, that's a film I haven't seen in a while. Uh, I have to rewatch it to be honest. Uh, like uh, the music feels a lot like Beverly Hills Cop, and like the. The, oh, the track. Yeah, and like the way that they the like they take down the bad guy at the end felt very Beverly Hills Cop, and a lot of it felt kind. Of, they even make some references like Super Cops and different things like that during. They even say uh, they even call Sly like a not Beverly Hills Cop but like a Beverly Hills Rambo. something. Yeah, and like the Rambo references and. <laughs> Rambo's the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's, that's a joke that you can do well. I mean, you can get away with that. Yeah. Back in 1989. Yeah. I was watching Slycast, and they were they were saying um, they were wondering in that universe if Rambo is like another character, like a like a movie character, which probably he was, but probably. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean. I, I was gonna. I watched the movie again. I wrote down some questions. So I actually got a lot of questions here. And they, just kind of like basic, you know. And then we'll talk about the production issues and if, if there should have been a sequel. All right. Uh, um, if there's if there should have been a special edition, what kind of features would you like to see? Uh, so. Definitely like to see a director's kind of that. With like, I'm sure there's got to be deleted scenes somewhere out there for that. Yeah, it, as a matter of fact, it's funny you mentioned it. There is, there was scenes cut. Oh. Um, let's see. Let me get it. Let me pop it up real quick. All right. But uh, I think with Wild Man Beyond, because I told him not a clock. Oh, his time zone is different than ours. Yeah. Yeah. He's like three hours behind us or something. Oh, no, he's one hour behind me. He's, he's one. It's eight o'clock where he's now. Okay, I'm so, thinking of California then. Yeah, he's he's about like an hour behind or something. So I don't know if he's gonna come on within the next forty five minutes. <laughs> oh gosh, that's all right. That's all right. I mean, that's I don't know. I'm trying to. I mean, I have nothing to do really. Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty much. I have. It's I'm. I have the evening. Yeah. I'm just seeing if he's if he uh, messaged me. No. So it's probably what he thought. It's probably what he got from me. Like, yeah. He probably thinks it's in an hour. That's okay though. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty-four uh, percent uh, of Rotten Tomatoes. Thirty-four percent. That's low, yeah. man. Yeah, six point three in IMDb. That's pretty bad. Let's look up some stuff here. Yeah, my Wikipedia. Really, yeah, it's what? 89. I thought it was 90. Was that? The year. It was 89. Oh, yeah. It was actually one of the last films to come out that week. Like, it came out in December, and um, it was like December 22nd. Or okay. Something like that. So, it was one of the last American films. Very cool. Nice. 
Yeah. Oh, hold on, there we go. Tango and Cash was also nominated for three Golden Raspberry Awards for Worst Actor Stallone. Wow. Kurt Russell was great in that movie. Yeah, Kurt Russell was great. I, which is just more reason why they should have made a sequel. Mm-hmm. And I like like Stallone's fighting style in that. It was really cool. Like yeah, he's like a city cop, but he when it comes down to it, he'll kick ass. <laughs> yeah, it's he does like a lot of like face blocks and like that 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 kind of thing. I like that. That was pretty cool. Going for people's throats and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> this I is mean, very neat. And now you're later. I know you did Rocky Five, but that was a weird time for Stallone. Yeah, Rocky Five, from man. Nine, from ninety to ninety-two, it was like a funky time for Stallone. Yeah, I was watching. Um, what was it? Future Shock. 2080 uh, documentary on 2080 yesterday, and they had or what the other day, and they had a whole segment on like the Judge Dredd movie, uh -huh. and man, they all like they hated that movie. They hated on that movie so bad. They gave a lot of praise to to the um, to Dredd, but they really jumped on like Judge Dredd. Like Judge Dredd. Yeah. Oh, wait, hold on. I'm getting messages from my uh, wild man. All right. I don't want to see what he is. Uh, let's see. Me and Matt are talking. About to do three-way call. Um, I'll be right back. I got a piss. <laughs> All right, man. Have you seen the Hateful Eight yet? No, I haven't. I haven't been to the theater since The Force Awakens. Oh, it was pretty good. I liked oh, Kurt Russell in that movie. I thought that was great how they put that together. I I was lucky I got to go see the Roadshow edition of that, and wow, amazing. I, I have to check it out. Yeah. Well, let's see. I'm about to call Wild Man see if this works. All right. Yeah, I have no oh. idea how that stuff works. I'm looking. <laughs> I I know like uh I know Isaiah knows how to do it, but okay, okay, okay I see it. Because um... usually when we have like Alex on, he'll he'll join the calls. Yeah. 